somebody made a comment last night um, about SE Trickster and it really inspired me to look more into it. And it's interesting, like, and I wanna talk about SE Trickster, a little bit about like what it is, and then I wanna talk about my experiences with it in particular in this video. So SE Trickster for INFPs and INTPs is essentially like a disconnect from the outside world. The physical world does not have as much of an impact on us in, internally. So internally, INTPs and INFPs are known for sort of living in their heads. And this has really been a big issue for me uh, throughout my life. And people are like, well, like I, don't, like, I don't really see SE Trickster in you, or I do see SE Trickster in you. And it's like, well, I just want to talk about it because there's different things. And I don't know if this is like from the opinion of a male INFP in particular, or if it's just universal to all INFPs. So. Um, I want to talk about what it was like growing up. So I am not into sports. Um, so I'm, I'm in good shape right now. So I work out, um, at, like lift weights at home and I run at the local track up at Kirkwood at nighttime, uh, occasionally and I do like stationary bike. So when I work out, um, I'm not really there exercising. I'm, in my head and the reason why I work out is because I found it makes me feel good and it's important to me to feel really good and so I just took that on because I was like I really want the like the mental experience of working out it makes me feel like amazing afterwards and I just feel better in general um, and it's just like such a release but I'm not actually like there like physically I mean I'm physically there but me mentally I'm not completely engaged when I'm working out and so my wife she's an INTJ and she got into running a couple of well maybe four or five years ago I guess at this point and she's gotten really good and um, she wanted me to join some running competitions last year and I did and I did pretty good but I I just I, I, I don't like competing against people um, it just seems just it's it's off-putting I like the idea of running and the idea of challenging yourself but when it comes to the actual race and, and feeling like accomplished afterwards, like, and so I'll just tell you, I got second place in my, um, my age group in the, uh, in this race. And like, I just really didn't care. Like it just didn't bother me. And I'm like, okay, I have this cool little plaque to look at at my house now. Um, but it's not like, I, I, I don't care. Like it doesn't matter to me that I got second. I could have gotten last and it's just, I'm okay. Last would have probably not been good, but like, uh, I just, it doesn't resonate with me like other things. Like to me, it's like ideas are important and like what ideas mean to me. If I'm being completely honest, it's like what what's important to me and and like how am I gonna use that to further my my inner compass, I guess you could say, or something like that. So my SE is, is almost like a learned thing and I, I really would argue that my SE is not really SE at this point. It's just, I'm, I'm participating, but I'm, I'm sort of disconnected from all of that at the same time. So growing up, um, I was in school um, from the ages of, you know, like what, four, um, up, you know, through college. And I went to college twice actually. But so all, through, all throughout school, for men, uh, for boys, they're expected to, participate in sports, at least in my school they were. And if you didn't play sports, and my school was fairly small, if you didn't play sports, you're an outcast or you're weird or something. And so I quickly learned, like, as an INFP, I want to get along with people. I want people to, like, I don't like the conflict that comes with, like, you not being the one participating and then everybody else uh, doing a sport, you know? It's like, I had, like, 13 boys in my class. So it's like, everybody was on the soccer team. Everybody was on the basketball team. You know, it was weird if you weren't. You're like the one kid of 13 that doesn't do it. So I just, I did it, you know? It's just like, that's what you do when you're a boy. And my parents encouraged me to do it. And so I did. And I've never understood sports or the idea of competition. Like, like I understand it, but it doesn't, I don't feel it. Um, it do, it's not important to me. Um, and I guess you could say that that's pretty similar to how the traditional female would approach an SE sort of situation. It's like, they, they can appreciate it and like it and they might like watching watching it or whatever, but they just don't really have an interest in like the competitive side of it or it's just not, it doesn't resonate with them as much. 
Um, I feel like I have so many things I want to say about this right now and I just kind of like lost my train of thought because I had like three thoughts at one time. Uh, it was weird. Um, and so like, I don't like for, here's an exa another example. So with like the Super Bowl this year, like I, this is, and this just goes to show how much I don't care about professional sports and competition. I literally didn't know who was playing in the Super Bowl until, um, until it was like the halftime show. And somebody was like, oh, Rihanna's the halftime show this year. And I was like, oh, Rihanna, that's kind of crazy and cool. That was like the highlight of the Super Bowl for me. Um, and I watched the halftime show. I haven't seen a minute of the Super Bowl. And I, I, I don't even know who played this year. I have no idea. I think Kansas City or something. I, I don't even know. I've, I've Just from what people have told me, um, I can name maybe like three. I can name the big sports players like Michael Jordan, um, Kobe Bryant. But I, I just don't have that drive like most men do. And this has been a big problem even going through adulthood because when I go to a party or something like that or some sort of social gathering, if I don't have a lot in common with somebody, usually the conversation will eventually kind of distill down to sports because that's sort of like the commonality that all men can talk about. And even then, I... I have nothing to say about it. I, I will even try to change the topic and I can sense, like if I'm talking to censors especially, I can sense that they're kind of like losing interest or they're pulling away. And my dad's an ESTP and he loves uh, Notre Dame. So I've been going to Notre Dame, um, you know, every couple of years to see a, a football game or something. And for me, like going to Notre Dame and seeing the football team isn't about the actual game or the team or anything. And I actually don't really like the game but it's about the experience of like going with my family and doing something that's like just fun and different. And this kind of leads to another thing, which is like with vacations and with being present. Um, I can go on a vacation pretty much anywhere. I've been on vacations to Greece, uh, Croatia, um, the Greek Isles, uh, Turkey. So I've been to Istanbul, I've been to Canada, um, Hawaii, like Alaska, a number of different places, Mexico, a number of different places. But every time I go, I'm always like, the idea of it sounds amazing. I'm like, oh man, I just want to travel. Like that just sounds incredible. Just like meet these new cultures and really experience it. And, I, and it's total idealization. When I actually get to a destination and I realize what it is and I'm like, oh, we're just going to like all the tourist spots. They're corralling us like a bunch of cows. This isn't really authentic. This isn't a real trip to this country or this place. This is a catered tourist, like this is what you get to see now and this is what you get to see now and oh, don't look at that. You know, like I'm thinking about Jamaica and like how people talk about going onto the beach in Jamaica, but don't go into the, the regular town area because it's really dangerous. It's like, well, as an INFP, it's like, I want that authentic experience. Like I wanna know what these people find authentic and how I can integrate that to myself, but I don't really see that. Um, when you go on vacation. And so when I get to a vacation, I feel so disconnected from wherever I'm at. And so I can appreciate the beauty. Like if I'm on a cruise and it's just gorgeous and there's a sunset, I mean, it's, it's, it's mind blowing and it's awesome. But I still, there's still a, some sort of disconnect. It's almost like, and somebody said this recently in a video, I think it was talking with famous people. He was mentioning how like you can almost Okay, never, scratch that. I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, and so going on vacations has always been like an, more about the idea of going on the actual vacation and not necessarily about the experience itself. So this, you know, it, it kind of leads to disappointments because I've been to a lot of different places and I'm like, eh, it was cool. It was cool. It was fun, you know, but it's like I could have just as much fun chilling in my room, like listening to music that is just amazing. And just getting that feel like all through your body of like, oh man, goosebumps, you know. That's way more appealing to me than being on some um, tourist trip in Greece, looking at these old rocks uh, that are just laying in the ground and somebody saying, oh, these used to be um, this building and this used to be this building. Like that's cool and everything. And especially when you're young, it's like you have that that drive to, get out there and to travel. But I just realized just doing that myself that it just wasn't made for me. It's not made for me, that's probably not the right way to say it. It just, it doesn't resonate with me like it does with other people. And so these are some of the struggles that I've had with SE. It's, it not only offers a disconnect to like my physical world, but it gives me a disconnect to my social world too because I feel like I can't relate to a lot of people. And I'm not joking when I say I live in my head. Um, 
I really do. I really struggle to, to get out of my head. And, you know, when it comes to, you know, coming up with, with different ideas, I, I have tons and tons of ideas. This is kind of a tangent. I have tons and tons of ideas, but most of them just never really come to fruition. And it really has to sink in with me to, to do an idea. I also want to talk about something else really quick. So like my clothes. Um, so like you all see me and I'm wearing tie-dye shirts mostly, um, except in the shorts. And I have that colorful background, you know, and I just decided I didn't want to do it today. You know, I'm just doing a free form thing. Um, that could come across as SE, I guess, but you have to understand in real life, what I'm wearing now, sweatpants and like a shirt like this, or like a, like just a raggedy old t-shirt from like 25 years ago. That's like more my normal attire. Um, I don't really uh, care about fashion at all. Um, it'd be kind of cool. Like I always thought it would be really cool to be like good at fashion, but I'm, I've kind of been known for wearing weird things throughout my life and things that don't really go together. And um, I don't have that, that desire to present myself in a certain way. So that stuff that I do for the channel is more about the image or more about the, the expressing the creative aspects of my personality. So like the, the, the color and the stuff is supposed to represent sort of like my, my creative, it's a physical manifestation of what goes on in my head, but it's not accurate. It's just like what, what happens when I express it out into a video form. And so I, I love the, the color and the, the different, like the play on like the psychedelic sort of uh, edge to the color scheme or whatever. But like, and I do actually wear tie-dye shirts now because I've made so many. Um, my wife's helped me make some tie-dye shirts. So I've made a ton of them. And uh, so I do wear tie-dye shirts now. But in real life, I ain't got no style, okay? Like, like I said at the beginning, I am the last person to recognize cat hair on my clothes. And it's pretty embarrassing. And I have some weird memories about that. So... Um, yeah, and I have some other memories about wearing interesting clothes and, and having my hair, uh, ha going to school with bedhead for years and then, you know, getting ridiculed for it eventually. So, um, SE Trickster is not fun. It's very real, you know, so that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching. Uh, I might do some more videos like this, but for now, I'm going to go back to the formal, the, the formal format that I use and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.